Welcome back to the Paranorm Girl Podcast. I am your host, Kristen. This is the end. My only friend, the end. Well, just about. This season was the longest by far and went by in a blink. Such is life. Before we are to get to our season finale and arrive at our final conclusion next week, every season I do try to include at least one genuine look into a skeptical take on these subjects. Why do this? Why is this so important for a paranormal podcast to do? One, because although I have experienced mysterious, nay, otherworldly, nay, inexplicable occurrences in my own life, I am actually still what you might call skeptical. Whether I like it or not, it is just healthy. And two, it's important because I believe that if we ever want to see this world move even an inch toward a more socially acceptable evolution. It is of paramount importance that we admit unabashedly that not every little experience we cannot explain in the moment is actually paranormal. It can't all be real. It can't be. And if you're not willing to admit that, admit when something you believe to be real is actually not. If you're not willing to even listen to the other side of this argument, well, you're being close-minded knock it off. When you are comfortably able to absolutely accept that logic, science, and reason can explain away a lot of this stuff, doesn't it make it all the more special and profound when it can't? Support for this show is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in below-the-waist grooming. If you have been listening to me talk about my recent partnership with them and heard me talking about all of the products that both my honey and I have been able to explore, and it all sounds amazing, but you just don't know which one to get, well, Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Hygiene Bundle, the Performance Package. Get him the perfect gift, a smattering of goodies for his goodies. Help him join over 7 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code PNG at manscaped.com. I have truly been having a blast with this stuff. Not only have I added the weed whacker to my own personal regimen, but Lee has improved upon his previous self-care and hygiene regimen as well. I have known this man for 14 years now. You could say I know him well by this point. In the very short time since he's begun to use the new trimmer, the toner, the deodorant, there seems to be a, a pep in his step, a fragrant zest to his chest, a clean-shaven class to his face. So, the Lawnmower 4.0, which is now his go-to trimming tool, is included in the performance package. He told me this week that he thinks it's cool, it saves time. And anything that saves him time, he's gonna fanboy about. How does it do that? It's it's waterproof, dudes. Take it into the shower with you. Two birds, two stones. I imagine if I had to save my shaving activities for either before or after the shower, I'd I'd never leave the restroom. I'd be recording in there as we speak. The lawnmower also helps reduce nicks and grooming accidents thanks to advanced skin-safe technology. In addition to being waterproof, it also has a 4000K LED spotlight for a more precise shave. It's nice and bright. Are you being abducted? No, you're just taking good care of your boys down there. Don't look up, look down. Get in them nooks and crannies, y'all. Get in there. So, right now, you can get 20% off and free shipping with the code PNG at manscaped.com. Try any one of their products or even get the whole performance package. Now is the time. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code PNG at checkout. Unlock his confidence and always use the right tools for the job with... Manscaped. All right. This skeptical episode is mainly going to focus on the tricky techniques used by people who con people out of money by convincing them they really do have psychic abilities. But I want to start this one out with a quick look at James Randi because, quite honestly, I adore him and what he accomplished. And I don't think I've ever come across a more likable skeptical skeptic in my life. 
If you are unfamiliar, Mr. Randy was a scientific or rational skeptic committed to outing fake psychics and fraud taking place in the name of the paranormal. I do love a good outing of people who deserve it. James Randy is no longer with us, but he left behind a long and mutilated path of outed and embarrassed psychics in his wake, including Uri Geller, James Heydrich, and a few lesser-known names thanks to Randy's early intervention that sent their possible rises to fame rightly straight into the dirt. An astrologer named Joseph Merriweather, psychic Barbara Martin, a crystal healer named Valerie Swan, and others. Many were sent packing who attempted to claim the $100,000 offered by Randy and the television show Exploring Psychic Powers Live. At the time this initial money was offered, he performed as examiner on this show, offering the jackpot to anyone who could demonstrate genuine psychic powers beyond just chance and guessing using fair scientific protocol and logic. Can you guess how many took home the prize? Zero. $100,000 was big money back in 1989. In 1996, James established the James Randi Education Foundation and offered a money prize for anyone accomplishing this feat, starting at just $1,000, but quickly escalating it to a million-dollar jackpot. Some attempted, but none made it past preliminary testing. Sylvia Brown famously accepted the challenge during an interview on Larry King Live and then refused to be tested. The foundation kept a clock on its website to record the amount of time that passed since she had accepted the challenge up until her death in 2013. Can't move on without addressing the Randy Geller feud and love affair. It was a decades-long adversarial relationship and really something to be admired. Randy accusing Geller of being a fraud and taking every opportunity to prove it. Geller suing Randy for defamation. Geller's team calling Randy's home before live television performances to ensure the famous skeptic was indeed home and would be unable to quickly make his way to to the studio to inspect and adjust the items Geller would be using in his performance that evening. Geller privately imploring Randy, saying that he was no enemy of his, and Randy putting right. So long as Geller was tricking the public, they were not friendlies. I'm paraphrasing, but it was a whole thing. If you have never seen the footage of Geller's performance, or lack thereof, on Johnny Carson, you have got to do yourself the favor. It's brilliant. It's made even more brilliant when you realize Uri could not perform his usual feats because all of the props brought by his crew had been replaced by advisement from Randy with very similar items in order to circumvent any stacking of the deck by the Geller team while also making it absolutely fair if he did in fact possess real psychic powers. One feat Uri was to perform included guessing without touching a small tin container out of many presented to him that uniquely contained water. Randy's advice to the prop masters was to add something sticky to the bottoms of each and every container, not to glue it, just to hold it in place. His suspicion was that Geller was making very subtle movements and watching the different reactions of the containers, unbeknownst to his audience's eye, and thus being able to easily pluck the correct container out of the mix after a process of elimination. And Uri spent a good deal of time on this live episode suddenly not feeling strong enough or feeling pressed by Carson, him huffing and twitching and changing the subject basically for the rest of the show. It's rather uncomfortable to watch, but oddly satisfying. But Geller fans out there, never fear. He would make all right with an appearance on the Merv Griffin show the following night, so good job on Geller's publicity manager's part, where he would miraculously be fully charged up and back in fighting shape and would go on to con and dupe many, many, many more adoring fans. If I sound hard on Geller, it's because I am. I wonder if he didn't start out having actual abilities 
at one point and then just got sucked into the celebrityism and the money because he did perform an amazing feat during the remote viewing trials at SRI. It was incredibly impressive. He was asked to draw, I think, like eight or nine hidden items. And for the most part, he was able to do so in very specific, minute detail on a couple of them. I remember the footage of the tester showing some of the actual items he had matched with correct drawings. And his reaction is really quite interesting. He almost seemed completely amazed himself, relieved and amazed that he had pulled this off. I guess I don't know the surrounding circumstances of that moment, but he looked so celebratory. It, it wasn't acting. It was so genuine. So, yeah, I do wonder if he really did have this gift to a certain extent. We'll never know for sure, but what I'm fairly certain of is that Uri, since the moment he began stepping onto the public stage, was deceiving folks. There was some level of deception taking place. Something kind of interesting, uh, kind of funny, is that James Randi himself was actually accused of being psychic and using anti-psychic powers against the fraudsters he outed when they would go to him trying to prove their powers. He held until his dying day that he was not in fact psychic in the least. Something else he would hold until his dying day is that he wasn't, as many called him, a debunker. He didn't like the term. He said in a later interview on the Right Where You Are Sitting Now podcast that he would have been just as happy for psychic abilities and paranormal occurrences to be proven valid as he was for them to not be. He wasn't just out to get people for the sake of getting them. He was out for the truth and, unfortunately, never found convincing evidence to support the phenomenon. Randy was one of a long list of skeptical magicians in recent history. He was the Houdini of the modern era, in my opinion. And it makes absolute sense, too, doesn't it? Magicians deal in magic they know isn't real in order to entertain. Imagine watching someone else trying to convince an unsuspecting member of the public that the very tricks the magician performs and knows are just entertainment are actually real because magic. But even when exposed, sometimes it just doesn't matter, such as in Uri Geller's case, he would continue on with his career just fine, basically never skipping a beat. Because as Randy often talked about, some people kind of want to be tricked, especially in the arena of fortune telling or communicating with a dead loved one so long as there are people out there willing and desperate for some kind of insider information about life and death, there will be dealers of it. Are you a paranormal junkie? If so, then join me, Damian Christie, from RKB Paranormal every Sunday morning at 6 a.m. as I talk ghost hauntings and all things spooky with paranormal teams, investigators, psychic mediums, and much, much more. Watch Life Beyond Six Feet on YouTube and listen wherever you get your music and podcasts from. Now we are going to move into the actual techniques of trickery used by scam artists and mentalists alike. But to help set the skeptical mood here, I want to recommend y'all watch a video I'm including below. Along the lines of the Uri Geller performance, it includes other cringeworthy, publicly televised exposés of psychics and mediums by Mr. Randy. I think you would enjoy it as much as I did. One in particular I found extraordinary was of a self-claimed psychic named James Heydrich. On Bob Barker's show, That's My Line, Heydrich attempted to prove his telekinesis abilities. He was unable to do so when a simple change was made to his setup. When he initially came on, he walked up to a small table with an open phone book set on top. He knelt close and with his mind's energy, easily flips a page. Okay, so Randy comes up, sprinkles pieces of styrofoam around the book. Heydrich 
is asked to do it again and spends a good amount of time just assessing just how to go about doing what he had just easily done, not moments before, theatrically trying to shoot the proper psychic energy from his hands, shaking his head, before saying something about the styrofoam and the lighting above creating static electricity that was holding the page down. And so long as the styrofoam was in place, it was going to be impossible for him to perform the feat. I should also mention there was a panel of scientists and experts sitting nearby. When asked about the electrical charge possibly being caused by the newly added styrofoam, they were like, what you talking about, foo? Because if there was any electricity being caused by the styrofoam, it just wouldn't be close to being enough to hold pages together. And furthermore, if they were in fact discussing a real psychic ability, they didn't see why it would make any difference at all. Yeah, I agree. Heydrich, as stupid as it sounds, was blowing air between the gap in his front teeth. And people were buying it. He would confess his fraudulence to an investigative reporter later. Good stuff. Good stuff, you guys. Okay, let's look at these techniques. Perhaps, if you have been to a psychic or medium you might spot something that may have possibly taken place in your own experience. And as with anything, to have fallen victim to a scam artist's tricks, to have been misled, is not uncommon. It does not make you a moron. Because it can happen to anyone. It's very easy for a perceptive predator to prey on someone's confirmation bias and subjective validation. Here we go. Cold reading is performed by stage mentalists, fortune tellers, and fake psychic mediums. It is also an important technique to perfect if you are in sales. It can absolutely help you seal the deal, allows you to form a bond with the potential customer where there was none before. A cold read is when information is obtained via body language, facial expressions, ways a person speaks, ethnicity, gender, age, anything that you carry around with you on your human billboard of a body is subject to cold reading. Think about all of the things about you that you wear on your sleeve, so to speak. How much does the average person immediately pick up about you as soon as you walk through the door for the first time, let alone a practiced and methodical cold reader? Cold reading also applies to shot-in-the-dark searching guesses made by the reader. These will have a high probability of being correct and based on the answers or reactions help the reader out immensely to steer the reading in the right direction and know which topics or questions are wrong and should be avoided. The hits can be emphasized and reinforced and now you've got a sitter who truly believes you just made a ton of chance connections and thanks to their confirmation bias, believe that you must have a gift and access to another level of information about them. Because how could you have gotten all of that stuff right about me? There's no way you could have known I am going to be much more inclined to accept anything else you've got to say. Shotgunning is a type of cold reading technique often performed in a larger group. This is when general information that seems very specific is thrown out. With a large group, a statement like, I am seeing an older male figure might be a father figure of some kind who died of an issue with the chest. I'm seeing blackness near and around the lungs and heart area. Name starts with a J. Might be for John, Jeff. Definitely starts with a J. Okay. Someone in the audience is likely to have lost a father-type figure with a J name to something having to do with a heart or breathing problem. The member will make that connection and feel that the medium was speaking directly to them. They make the connection. And even if the shotgunning had some incorrect information to it, the amount of seemingly accurate information is still there. It's specific, isn't it? It's profound. Let me just let me just make excuses for this guy. He's doing his best. He's got to be talking about my uncle Jim. 
kind of like shotgunning, Barnum's statements are general characterizations given by the reader that seem very specific, but will apply to a wide range of people. They give the reader quite a bit of wiggle room in order to snag on to something their sitter reacts to positively or negatively, and then based on that, more easily zero in on their guesses. Barnum statements rely heavily on the forer effect, or the sitter's eagerness to fill in details and find some connection to themselves or their life. They find ways to make it apply. Barnum statements are designed to elicit an identifying response for the reader to then expand and expound, putting it all together and solidifying the sitter's subjective validation. And I, I have said that term twice now, so just for anyone who doesn't know, subjective validation is just when a person takes a statement or information and considers its personal meaning or how it is significant to them. Horoscopes anyone. The researcher Bertram Forer originally called the Barnum and Forer effect the fallacy of personal validation. Examples of a Barnum statement would sound like this. You are having problems with a relative. There was something you wanted to do as a child that didn't come to be, but you find yourself thinking about it from time to time. You seem to attract those who only value the things you can do for them. Pretty general, might seem specific in certain circumstances, though. Similar, and another take on general characterizations, a rainbow ruse is a statement that assigns some sort of personality trait to a sitter, but then also assigns the opposite, to cover all bases. These seem like they would be easy to spot, but they rather have a great impact on an eager sitter, leaving them with the impression of being deeply and profoundly understood. It's a completely paradoxical statement that our human brains are more than happy to validate and accept in ourself because in one sense or another, all rainbow ruses are true for everyone at one time or another to some extent. You are often reserved when it comes to love, but definitely find moments for spontaneity. People describe you as forthcoming and honest, though you have a few secrets you carry around they would be very surprised to know. Hot readings take no talent at all, but have maybe the biggest impact on your audience. The technique involves getting relevant information from your sitter before the reading even starts. If it's an in-person scenario, the psychic themselves might chat up members of their audience innocently enough, all the while gathering information about what you're doing there and who you are hoping to reach. Something you might even forget in the heat of the moment when your name is called and your deceased mother has a message for you. Doesn't have to be the psychic. Uh, could be someone from their team, a plant audience member there to listen in on pre-show conversations taking place. Or... How about that info sheet you filled out before you were allowed to enter the room? Now, what about if your reading is over the phone? Did you give them your name, your phone number to schedule the appointment, and your reading ended up being bone-chillingly spot on? You don't say. Much like Hydric's styrofoam issue, I would think if we are talking about a real psychic ability, they should probably be able to perform their abilities the same under any circumstance. So why require identifying information ahead of time? The final technique I want to talk about is called the one ahead technique. This is used in billet reading by regular everyday magicians and mentalists for entertainment purposes, but has been used far more nefariously with conceivably life-altering consequences. Billet reading is when audience members put a question on a card and seal it inside an envelope. A small stack of them is handed to the mentalist who claims they can read the questions through the envelope and will give their answers to it before opening it. The magician begins by selecting the first envelope off the stack, mind reading its contents, and announcing a memorized and rehearsed answer. The plant from the audience will yell out, that's me. The magician will then open the envelope and pretend to read the already memorized question in their head that they just answered. 
all the while reading an actual audience member's question. Tosses it aside, holds up the next envelope, gives the answer to the previous question they just read, opens the second envelope and announces out loud that previous question he had just read all the while reading the next question, and so on and so forth. Pretty good, right? Sneaky, sneaky. In a variation of this technique, according to our friend James Randi, Peter Popoff, who was a well-known televangelist in the early 80s, claimed he was a clairvoyant and a faith healer who could accurately announce home address and specific illnesses of his audience members during his healing sermons, and implied he was able to do so via divine revelation and God-given ability. He was accused of using electronic transmissions to get his information. He denied it and continued to rake in the cash. In 1986, though, the one and only James Randi debunked and exposed Popoff beyond repair. Thanks to the assistance of an electronics expert, Alexander Jason, Randi and Jason were able to tune in to a wireless radio transmission from Popoff's wife, Elizabeth, to a small hidden earpiece he wore. Elizabeth would relay information taken from prayer request cards filled out and submitted by their audience, which Popoff would repeat to his astonished followers and then dramatically apply his faith healing powers to people with cancer and various infirmities and mental disorders and incurable conditions. James Randi presented some of these clips on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson, interspersed with video from Popoff's sermons, and the following year, Popoff would declare bankruptcy due to ratings bombing and donations declining. Poor, poor him. There are few things that make me more outraged than rich scumbag con artists like Popoff and his wife, taking advantage of people dependent on them like they did, preying on the weak and the sick, selling them nothing but false hope and lies in the name of God, in the name of the paranormal, just pisses me off to no end. But yes, the one ahead technique, Elizabeth would feed him the information he needed as he sermonized and danced around the stage before launching himself into yet another miraculous healing event. We have already talked other skeptical aspects of this subject throughout the season, such as the Fox sisters and the infamous ectoplasm episode. If you want to refresh your memory because you are James Randi incarnate and can't get enough skepticism, go take a listen to episodes 54 and 58. But that being the case, I won't cover them again here. I, uh, I both enjoyed doing this episode and, and, and I felt crushed too. My spirit is a little weary from oscillating back and forth between, oh, this part is so convincing to this part is absolute garbage. And have I been deceived in the past too? And, and, and the thought of that is, it's embarrassing, you know, but that's the importance of doing this in a nutshell. We have to be willing to feel uncomfortable with the realization that what we thought we knew might be wrong. And that's okay, because on the flip side, you might learn that things you thought were crazy, well, there might be something there after all. And that is all part of the ride, too. Thank you all for tuning in today. Just one week remains before our season finale. I am closing in on season five subject, but am still taking recommendations for consideration. Send those suggestions to paranormgirlpod at gmail.com. All topics are carefully considered, of course. Also, if you would like to hear a certain guest on the show, shoot me those suggestions as well. I will reach out and try to get them on. And last thing, I did want to shout out some love and adoration for Whitman County Humane Society. Heading into the Christmas season, it is a time for giving, sharing, showing appreciation, and spreading love. WCHS continues trudging forward with their work for the betterment of the homeless animal population in my area, and uh, I just couldn't be more grateful that an organization like that exists. When the summer months wither away and the events and the fundraisers are over, 
the good people at WCHS continue chipping away hard at work to give these tiniest of souls a chance at a good life filled with comfort. So if you are so inclined, show them some love by following them on their socials or even pushing a couple bucks their way. It all goes to good use. All right, folks, that is going to be a wrap for now. It is time for your final note. Had a couple thoughts going through this one that I wanted to share. This might be controversial, but if psychic gifts are real, if I ultimately land on there really is something here beyond a shadow of a doubt, I don't think they should be exchanged for money. Not charging for the information or communication you provide could lead to a lot of great things. Imagine if money could be completely removed from the situation, we would essentially eliminate those who are out there hurting others for their own greed and benefit. It would cut down on the excessive, unnecessary amounts of people mucking up the field and making it harder for someone legitimate to be taken seriously. If there were far fewer but genuine psychics out there, it would be so much easier to make an earnest scientific review of actual evidence without wasting time weeding out the people blowing air through the gap in their teeth. And also, it's kind of weird that if someone had a really important, possibly earth-shattering message, proof beyond proof of existence of the afterlife, but they refuse to provide it without first being rewarded? That, that does not seem right. I understand the argument that their time is valuable and important too, and, and they deserve to be paid for their time and effort. I get it. But should this really be anyone's job? I don't know what the answer to that is, but it, it feels like if this is a spiritual calling from the universe or whatever, someone is being called to such an altruistic, loving, hope-giving pursuit, it just seems strange to me that there is so much money involved. And if you feel the universal powers that be are calling you to do this, to help others for the betterment of woman and mankind. If it's that important to some energetic manifestory force outside of yourself that you do this for others, if you hold that to be true, don't you think those same forces would provide a way for you to get by without taking it from those you say you are helping. Second thought. If you are scamming people and full well know you are not the real deal, know this. You are the worst. You are absolutely the worst. If I could wave a magic wand and stop your deception, I would in a heartbeat, but I can't make people do the right thing. Wish I could. Another thought, if psychic senses are real, if people really can communicate with the dead, why did James Randi's million dollars remain unclaimed? So what if there were scientific protocols put in place? If the ability is real, that shouldn't have mattered. So why could not one person claim it? So, here I sit at the end of the season. Now is the time to reflect, go back over all I have learned in the last few months. It has been wild, lots of surprises, lots of interesting aspects to it. It's not quite as simple as I'd hoped starting out. Holding the skeptical episode until the end was by design for myself and you all. No matter how far we delve into any of these topics, I don't think we should ever forego a good reality check. A reminder that though we deeply desire something to be true and real, we cannot lose ourselves to that desire. There's a lot of beauty and mystery to our base reality, and we shouldn't lose sight of that. Only someone 
with a healthy amount of open-minded skepticism, I think, can see something truly profound when it happens. The pendulum swings both ways. Those who think everything is spiritually explained fail to experience the true beauty and mystery that is life. And those who find everything can be logically explained fail to accept when it can't. A good rule of thumb to live by. Always have good reasons for holding any belief, but always be willing to change your mind when presented with better information. So, teeter with me. Stay safe, keep the nightlight on, and sleep with one eye open.